Hi, this is Gail, and uh, welcome to sunny, dusty Arizona. Um, the last time we met uh, at Long Day's Journal, I was embarking on a project uh, for the design team, the creative team at Mad Paper Crush. And today I'm back to show you how to hopefully complete that project. And with any luck, if I don't talk too long, uh, this video will be a one and done on how to make this very neat traveler's journal using the um, uh, digitals from Mad Paper Crush, uh, primarily uh, the Americana uh, digitals, although there will be some others. So those of you who have met me before uh, probably know that I don't typically do tutorials. I haven't been making junk journals all that long, and there are a whole lot of people out there who are much better at these techniques than I am. Uh, however, um, in this instance, since there may be some of you who have not met me before, I'm going to make an attempt to uh, both uh, give you, impart some of my wisdom, in quotes, as well as uh, jump to the finish and sh flip through of this um, uh, traveler's notebook. Um, so I'll be going back and forth between a live video and just some uh, photo stills of each step of the way as we complete it. So I hope you will come along and uh, join me on this journey. So picking up where we left off, hopefully you've uh, gotten together a couple of pieces of um, cardstock or a uh, file folder or something to with which to make your covers. And um, then I've gone ahead and uh, fussy torn uh, some of the digitals. You could go ahead and cut them out and fussy cut. Uh, personally, I cannot cut a straight line with the scissors, let alone follow some of the curves on these designs. And I really like the aspect of a rough edge um, to the, the pictures that we're going to make a collage out of uh, for our cover for this Traveler's Notebook. And um, then what I have actually gone ahead and done is glued these, uh, the collage, the pieces, I've arranged them uh, in some kind of semblance of an order with both sides of the cover having similarities. So there's some symmetry to the front and back cover. Um, and I've gone ahead and glued them down. And when I come back uh, and continue the video, you're going to see that uh, I will also have uh, gone to my sewing machine and done a zigzag stitch around the uh, edges of the, the covers as well as outlined uh, the individual pictures alone. There are other ways to do that, which I'll talk about when we come back. So if you don't have a sewing machine and you don't want to use that zigzag stitch, you can still uh, make quite a nice design on the cover when we're done. And just be prepared when we come back after sewing down uh, collage pieces. Um, we're also going to take some gesso or a, a thin coat of household paint and we're going to uh, kind of whitewash over those uh, digitals and give it a nice vintage look. See you when we get back. Okay, so I'm back from uh, using my sewing machine to stitch the uh, collaged cover together. Um, before I did that though, I took the extra measure of gluing one of the background pages uh, onto the back of the uh, my cardboard cover. Rather than have those green images from the Time Punch card, I thought that this would be kind of attractive and it's from the, um, the Seaside Lighthouse series. So I don't know that the stitching necessarily 
shows up really well uh, on the back side, but um, I thought it was nicer than just looking at those punch cards. Meanwhile, on the front side, um, I think I got a little ambitious. Um, and what you will find is that instead of just stitching around the cover and um, then uh, going vertically and horizontally uh, to stitch down some of the other pieces and make a random pattern, I actually try to follow the stripes of the flag with my stitching and um, uh, as well as the, the square area that contains the, the stars on the flag. So there are some diagonal lines um, on with stitches that are zigzag uh, on my cover as well. So I don't know how well they're showing up for you right now, but hopefully when we gesso over those, um, that'll give a little more texture and background to the cover. Also, I might add, uh, and you might see that uh, a little better, uh, I did some stamping on the front of the cover. Uh, typically, I might have even used a stencil and some texture uh, paste uh, that I would then dye, uh, but because I really am going to use this as a travel journal and uh, stick it in and out of a purse, uh, I thought that that uh, texturized uh, area might come off. So I've just done some little stenciling and some um, uh, distressed ink around the edges rather than have that cardboard cover. So let's get cracking and um, do a little uh, gessoing on the cover to um, uh, kind of mute the the um, decoupage, the collage pieces, I should say. Uh, and you could, I meant to say you could use decoupage um, medium as opposed to gesso, or you could use household paint. But as we go over those collage pieces, I want to do it pretty lightly. So I've kind of watered down my gesso and um, I'll start it with a brush, but quite frankly, um, there's no neat way to do this. And um, I'm gonna wind up getting in there with my fingers and going around the edges of the pictures and going over those areas that I want to have a little more intense uh, gessoing on, uh, but I don't wanna totally cover up the color in the images, so I've watered it down. So let's get cracking. medium and I'm going to go in different directions uh, I'm going to go horizontally and vertically to kind of follow the lines of the collaged paper that I put in there and get a little bit more on my brush oops I'm gessoing the wrong side just goes to show you you need to pay attention okay let's turn that over And there you have it. Okay, I'm back. And while I was away, I took the liberty of uh, sewing on uh, a few other elements to give the uh, Traveler's Notebook a little bit more dimension and depth. You get it? Took the liberty, 4th of July. Oh, never mind. I'm a little delirious from um, 
from uh, the excitement around making this traveler's notebook uh, with the elements from Mad Paper Crush. Um, actually, someday I should put out a uh, junk journaling tutorial bloopers video because if you knew what went on while I was sewing this, uh, you'd be amazed that uh, uh, it even came out at all. Uh, so what I've gone ahead and done is um, use uh, some of the elements of uh, both the Seaside Lighthouse uh, and Hawaii uh, Garden, as well as the Americana collections, to cut out some circles, sew around them, um, and add some additional elements to both the front and back covers of my Traveler's Notebook. Uh, you may recall earlier, I talked about how you could add some dimension and highlight some of these elements, even if you were not able to sew them on. Uh, so one of the ways to do that is to um, either take a um, charcoal type pencil uh, and what they call, I just learned this word, uh, a tortillon, which is basically nothing but a blending stub. Uh, draw around the elements you want to highlight and then kind of smudge them in. Uh, you could also do the same thing with a um, watercolor uh, pencil and use a little uh, water brush uh, to, to smudge around um, your outlines. Um, and this one uh, you won't get so much smudging out of, but it's a little more controlled in terms of the detail. And for someone like me who tends to get a little messy with their uh, uh, smudging, uh, then this kind of um, little fine tipped uh, felt tip um, uh, marker would be good. And let me see if I can just do a quick demonstration. Um, here we go. I'm going around the edge of this lighthouse. Um, and you can see how it brings out some of the detail and gives some more dimension, even if you had just glued this on and not sewn around the edges. Now, when I was talking about a blooper reel, and I'm not gonna do this all in front of you, I'll fill it in later and you'll come back and see the final result. But um, when I was talking about my uh, blooper reel earlier, uh, a, an interesting thing happened on the way to uh, sewing this, and that is that um, I probably need, this is what the experts tell me, a new um, needle in my sewing machine. And so uh, in order to get the zigzag to show on the correct side, the outside of my cover, I actually had to stitch it from the inside and you can't really see it now because I have this clipped together so that we can uh, sew in the signature later. But I had to sew it from the inside. And as a result, um, I couldn't see what I was stitching around. I kind of went by feel. I put my finger on, on this side of the cover while I was sewing the other side of the cover. And so there's a whole lot of extraneous stitching going on here. And um, uh, it was really kind of funny, but I was kind of too lazy to change the needle on my sewing machine. And um, the inside of my cover, the stitches are not precise. They're, they're inside out uh, zigzag stitches, but because it's the inside of the cover and we're going to do some other elements in there to cover it up, I don't think it will be so bad. So let me just finish one of these with the charcoal pencil and my little tortillon uh, to do some smudging. And you can uh, do this all the way around an element, or you could do it on one side with, uh, or partially around, so it creates a nice kind of shadow effect. Of course, having done it over here, now I have shadows on two different sides of my um, elements, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I kind of do like that highlighting on one side. So, um, so much for that piece of the journal. Uh, now what uh, I'd like to go ahead and do is talk about um, uh, sewing in um, our signatures. So what else is there to do? You want to select your uh, papers for your signatures, you want to trim them to size, and you want to um, stitch them inside your journal. Now typically I would do a uh, three hole, um, uh, oh 
heaven forbid I should remember this while I'm on air here. I should do a three hole pamphlet stitch, but um, because I'm going to put another um, piece of fabric on the outside of my cover, um, and I happen to find this really nice little uh, vintage piece of linen that has a little um, uh, color appropriate red, white, and blue trim on it, and I'm gonna sew that on the outside. Uh, I wanted this to be less bulky, so I'm gonna disappear again on you, uh, do a straight line stitch um, from the outside, inside out again, so my nice color uh, stitching will show on the outside. And then, um, no, actually, because I'm covering this up, I'm gonna do my stitching from the outside in. The outside is gonna be covered with this nice little additional trim um, uh, for the spine, and uh, which I'm gonna glue on top of the stitches. So I'm not gonna do the pamphlet stitch, even though I'm a sucker for things like um, charms and dangles hanging from strings, either on the inside or outside. I wanted to make this a little less bulky. Now also, um, I typically, when I'm doing the outside of a journal, the, uh, the spine, I like to use some lace. And that does have kind of a nice Americana feel to it but um again i found this fabric and i thought well this is even this is even uh, more appropriate for the subject matter but uh, i have no doubt that my lace trim will show up someplace else perhaps on the edges of this uh traveler's notebook so after we sew in the signature uh what else is there to do well uh we can uh decorate some of the pages and uh to that end i have um cut out some elements uh from various collections this one is a little uh, pocket which i'll probably uh, glue onto the inside cover and that's going to be a great place to store things like your souvenir tickets um when you uh, are on the road uh, and it could also uh, save things like uh, postcards from your travels and this is one from the um, uh, lighthouse uh, seaside lighthouse collection and i actually have made that two-sided with one of the stamps from that collection uh, actually from the americana collection so that looks kind of like a vintage postcard and you could actually write on both sides of that but when you're really on your travels use that little pocket um, to store some of your ephemera. And um, last but not least, uh, when I come back, I think uh, what I will do is add some tabs from the collection. And um, I might usually just add one tab, um, but I'm thinking, again, I had put 12 sheets of paper in here. We have 48 pages that, and some of the paper is uh, a little more delicate than others. So rather than tug at the sheet of paper itself, I might want to use four tabs. Um, you could use as many as you want. You could use one to uh, denote each of the states that you visit uh, or locations on your travels. I think I'm going to do one for north, south, east, and west, just to, to demonstrate four different sections uh, inside my traveler's notebook. And what I may even do, and this is the piece de resistance, um, uh, which I was gonna save to show you during the flip through, but I can't resist showing you now. Of course, I have this all clipped in here so that I'm sure it's nice and straight for me to uh, uh, stitch down uh, the inside, um, uh, the center of the uh, signature to my cover. And most of the sheets have been cut to the size of the cover, but I did wanna make use of the full uh, size uh, without reducing it on my computer of this beautiful little note paper from the Americana collection. So I've made that a fold out and I have distressed that. And so I think one of my sections, what we're actually gonna do is um, use the little tab on the fold out so that it additionally uh, distinguishes that from the rest of the journal and you can see it right at the outset uh, and flip it open uh, right away when you open up your journal. So uh, I'm gonna disappear on you again and I'm gonna do some more sewing and let's hope this time uh, I, it doesn't create any footage for my future uh, blooper video and uh, I'll see you a little bit when I get back. Ta-da! The Traveler's Notebook is complete. You can see I've added some lace trim to the open edges of the notebook, and hopefully you'll also be able to catch a glimpse of the muslin 
which I stamped with a lovely seaside vignette lining the inner spine. It's nice even if it's mostly hidden. Um, I added uh, four tabs from the Seaside Lighthouse collection, um, each of which could roughly divide the Traveler's Notebook into north, south, east, and west for areas of the country, but you could easily add one for each state or re region that you visit. One thing's for sure, I never work in my journals from front to back. You'll notice there's also a pocket on the inside cover, which is from the Seaside Lighthouse collection, in which you can save your ephemera. Um, I've saved uh, a postcard from my journey, and look, my tickets include uh, admission to the White House and the U.S. Senate. It would also be a good spot to store any postcards you collect along the way. Towards the back of the Traveler's Notebook, I've also added a belly band. I'm sorry it's vertical, but I wanted to be sure that I, you got the full gist of the sentiment since it's ephemera from my home state of New York and also describes a favorite beach locale in New Jersey. Get ready for the ink splot, which is an homage to the coffee that I invariably spill every time I'm writing in a journal on the road. Look for it or its equivalent in every junk journal or traveler's notebook that I make. Towards the back of the journal, I've included a vertical belly band. I know it should be horizontal, but I couldn't bear cut off the imagery and sentiment from New York and New Jersey locales that are dear to my heart. Also, I'm hoping that the addition of the clip art stylized map in that little tuck spot will demonstrate the value of including that in your traveler's notebook. Finally, every junk journal, and especially every traveler's notebook, has to have a spot where the owner can write their name in case of loss. Mad Paper Crush has some great vintage labels that will fit the bill. And I've added a little palm tree, this journal belongs to logo, which I created from a handheld thermal printer that makes a sticker from any, from any digital image. So thanks for joining me on this journey, and I hope to see you for another creative team project in August, or perhaps before, if you'll come up back again and see me real soon. Mm -hmm.